Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpabana chapam Animadi biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhavani Chakra Rajarata Rudha Sarva Yudha Parishkrita Gaya Chakra Rata Rudha Mantrini Parisevita Namaste and welcome to another episode of Lalita Sahasranama. So these names are so deep. You know, I mean, I could do a half hour or a longer video on each one of them. And especially these in the beginning, because they're setting up the whole view of Sri Vidya. Now, Sri Vidya is the knowledge of the goddess and especially the knowledge of the ritualistic worship of the goddess. So this is the beginning stage. This is where everybody should start. And this is the gateway actually to a much deeper understanding when these rituals are internalized in the advanced stage. Now, if you've been following this channel, we've been through the Chatur Darshanam, the four views where one starts out with a very external dualistic view uh, that I am different from God. And so I have to do all these rituals according to scriptural injunctions to please God and like that. But in the next stage, one starts to identify with God. One starts to realize that God is not only without, but also within. And at the uh, summit of that stage, one realizes that I and God are one. That automatically leads to meditation. And in meditation, one transcends duality altogether and finally comes to the jnana yoga stage, which is actually inexplicable. <laughs> But anyway, so we're starting here from, we're still in the beginning. Huh? We're not even finished with the first hundred names yet. So in the beginning, all of the structures, the background knowledge is given. And then we can base our worship on that. So this 68, Chakra Raja Vrata Rudha Sarva Yudha Parishkrita that Chakra Raja. Chakra Raja means the king of the chakras. Now, she is the king of the chakras because she is the chakra system. And Chakra Raja also happens to be the name of her chariot. <laughs> that means that the body and specifically the chakras are the chariot in which she rides to war. And what is the war about? Bandasura. <laughs> Bandasura is the demon, that very powerful demon, created from the ashes of Manmata, Cupid. So from the ashes of Cupid, who was burnt by Shiva for disturbing his meditation, Bandasura arose. And he took over the whole universe, basically. He pleased Shiva with his austerities and got tremendous power. And he even invaded heaven and took over the, the demigods, castles and planets and stuff like this. So he was incredibly powerful. And only Devi, only Shakti could kill him. And what does Banda mean? Fool. <laughs> Bandasura in the allegorical interpretation, 
is a symbol of the ego, the foolish ego who thinks I am. Huh? And because I am, I am entitled to everything, <laughs> whatever I want. No, it doesn't work that way. Instead, if we find ourselves in an egoic state of mind, the best thing we can do is purify ourselves by worship of the goddess. And these names start to tell us how to do that. Chakra Raja, we should worship Chakra Raja, the Rataruda. Rataruda means a war chariot. Huh? These chakras are actually meant to vanquish the ego. They're actually meant to kill the ego, the false ego and the mind that it's based on. Sarvayuda, all kinds of battles. Parishkrita, Sarvayuda, all kinds of battles and weapons are available or present in this chariot. So she is riding on this chariot full of all kinds of weapons. And she's like ready for it. Like, come on, you know. <laughs> because she can easily defeat ignorance. Uh, it's no problem for her to vanquish the ego. Just like that, snap of her fingers and it's gone. Or anything that she wants to vanquish. Huh? These are her three roles, creation, maintenance, and destruction. And she does them all effortlessly and with tremendous uh, flair and style. Huh? That's why she doesn't just make Bandasura disappear, which she could easily do, but she goes through this whole battle scenario, huh? this whole drama. People love a good drama. They love a good story. And she does this then to instruct us, to show us that we should fight against ignorance. We should battle against the ego and the greed and entitlement that come along with it. Now, so this chariot consists of nine tiers or levels. Huh? And this represents the nine triangles of Sri Chakra. Here's a picture of Sri Chakra and you can see there are nine triangles, four uh, with the triangles, the point of the triangle pointing upwards and five with the points of the triangles pointing down. The intersection of these five, four and five triangles creates then uh, 44 triangles within them. And these are the 44 goddesses, 43 demigoddesses and the 44th is Lalita. And at the points of the triangles, there are 79 yoginis. Uh, the yoginis are in charge of specific potencies. So all the gods and goddesses, uh, even the demigods, you know, that, that manage the different aspects of the material world are said to reside in the Sri Chakra. That means one can use the Sri Chakra as the deity for the worship of any god. Okay, I have a little Sri Chakra and I also have a small copper plate inscribed with Sri Chakra and in these I perform all my worship. So Chakra Raja means the six chakras and Rata, besides chariot, also means the base or foundation. So the foundation of yoga is the six chakras. And the seventh chakra is the Chakra Raja. Huh? The Chakra Raja, the Sahasrara, the thousand petal lotus, where self-realization takes place. Because Sahasrara is the base of consciousness. So. The Chakra Raj means the base, and Rata means uh, the basis. So 
these six chakras are the foundation of attaining pure knowledge. And as we discussed many times, one has to penetrate these six chakras to attain self-realization. There's so much here. Honestly, I could easily do an hour video just on this Nama. So the next one. Geya Chakra Rata Ruda Mantrini Parisevita. This is about the chariots that accompany her chariot. And the first one is the Geya Chakra. Huh? Well, the next one we'll get in the next Nama. So the next chariot is the chariot of Mantrini. Mantrini Devi is also called Shyamala Devi. She's one of the goddesses in the Sri Chakra. And uh, she's already been mentioned in Nama 10. Manuru Pekshu Kodanda. Uh, Mantrini Devi, who owns this Geya Chakra chariot, worships Lalita. She chooses to worship Lalita. She doesn't have to. She only has to respect her like her boss, <laughs> but she worships her. Why? Because Lalita is the origin of all good qualities. And so Mantrini, being one of her ministers, assists her in everything, including warfare. Okay, of course, and Mantrini means the goddess of mantra. So the mantras of Lalita go into war along with her and vanquish the enemy, huh? this Bandasura, who is the ignorance, the ego, the sense of entitlement, greed, desire. And so we can see that if we want to attain self-realization, if we want to overcome the ego, huh? our right-hand man, our main help in that is mantra. And there are so many mantras. My God, in the, in the Devi Bhagavatam, Srimad Devi Bhagavatam, there are hundreds of mantras, goddess mantras. They all have different specific purposes, which you can read about if you read the book. It's in our library. So there's no shortage of weapons in the fight against ignorance but we have to use them, we have to utilize them. Huh? Like just now, the whole world is suffering from this virus thing. But we've already done the research. We know that Homa or fire sacrifice destroys the virus. The, the nanoparticles of smoke in the air destroy the, the outside covering of the virus, which is the means that it uses to latch onto cells and take them over. So why aren't people doing HOMA? Everybody in India knows about HOMA. Well, why are they not doing it? Because of ignorance, because of laziness, because of making choices other than what is actually good for them. See, this is the crazy thing about human beings. <laughs> they do all kinds of things that are bad for them, even though they know better. You know, I'm, everywhere I go, when I'm wearing this Tripundra, people ask me, you know, where are you from? Why are you wearing the Bhasma? Well, you know, who do you worship? What is your mantra? You know, they're all very curious because they never see Western people. Heck, they never even see their own people actually following the directions of the scripture. I don't just do this because it looks cool. <laughs> actually, it doesn't really look so cool, you know? It's like tiger stripes. <laughs> but because it's mentioned in the scriptures, is given in the scriptures. If you want to please Shiva and Shakti, wear the Basma, wear the Tripundra. That's their sign. You see, and then the devas that are always watching over the material world and taking care of different things, they see this and they know that 
not to treat you harshly, not to, not to punish you for small infractions and stuff like this. You get a lot of slack from the devas. You get a, a lot less karmic burden and your quality of life increases tremendously simply by wearing basma. You know, nowadays people wear just little tiny dot, you know, put on with a Q-tip <laughs> or a little bit of ash just to hear, you know. But, you know, that's not what it says in the scriptures. The scriptures say, man, lay it on, you know. <laughs> so there's no reason to be ashamed of having knowledge. And if people would reject you because you follow the instructions of the scriptures, it's like, do you really want to associate with them? I don't. So if anybody thinks that, you know, putting on basma is not cool, I don't want to know them, man. I don't want to even see their faces. So this is the thing. The scriptures give us all the weapons. They give us all the tools, all the methods, everything we need to stay healthy and happy and attain self-realization. And our disease is that we don't follow. See, just like this is the end of the video. I always give the good stuff right at the end, but people tune out in the middle. They have no attention span, no concentration. Why? They don't use mantras, so they don't develop their minds. Poor devils. <laughs> But we do. And because of that, we're getting the benefits up to and including full self-realization. Om Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.